been researching yourself in recent times with an autobiography. I'm all um, nervous out about now. it. It's called Out yes. Are you nervous about it? It's a big thing. Yeah, because I, I think um, all the other stuff that I do is... Um, you see a bit of me, but it's not all of me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a bit like you've been sure. talking about, about suddenly letting a bit more out into the open and it, you feel quite vulnerable in a weird yeah. sort of it's way. It's your first like, book too, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's well, honestly, Davina, I, I started the book this week. Oh, have you? I swear to God, from start to finish, I could not put it down. And what I just adored about you is, you know, you do put a lot of things out there, but the brutal honesty that you have been and how, how you've yeah. dealt with yourself over such a phenomenal career is just inspiring to read. And oh, I couldn't put it down, thanks, honestly. Lisa. But the one thing I loved the best was how you have this, you know, this brilliant aspect of life that you know, you've got this exuberant personality and you're like, you know, so excited. And if you don't like it, you can, you yeah. know, and but that's you, great. And you really go into that in the book. Yeah. But yeah. You it's very, really very honest. Uh, you've channeled some terrible things that you put yourself through mm. into positivity, haven't you? Because, I try and do because that with because I everything. Remember, yeah, because yeah. I remember when I interviewed yeah, you years talked, ago, we? we talked for hours and your story truly shocked me because mm. I had kind of encountered you early on in your career, but I didn't realise what you were struggling with, the mm. addiction, and everything else and it's almost like you've put that behind you and turned all the negative into it's positive. amazing it's I amazing. don't want to wear I mean and I know I'm sure you know everybody has a story and everybody has problems that they face I just don't want to be a victim no I don't no. want to portray myself as a bit victim I don't want to feel like a victim I you've learned to, by those things uh, yeah yeah I've learned by it and um, if I can teach anybody else anything through what I've learned, yeah, and that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Or help anybody that's sort of in a dark place that sure. might think, well, maybe I can turn it round to a positive. Yeah, and as you say, you get to a certain stage of life, and, and everybody's got their experiences and their stories and, and their, their hard times that they've, they've gone through. And, I mean, you, you talk in the book about the loss of your sister. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, Lisa, you really relate oh, to that with the loss of your mum. It was unbelievable. The way when Caroline was dying, and obviously you're a mother of three, and the way you say you have this, explain this open-door policy, because different parents deal with grief, you know, and what's going to happen different way. But I want you to share with it because it just yeah. has such a lasting effect on me the way I dealt with my mum. So um, yeah. my my sister lived next door to us we were very codependent and um, when she was sick I obviously just the world stops and you just stop everything put everything down and um, I was with her all day every day which was kind of tough on my kids because they mm. just suddenly weren't seeing mummy so I just said look come and see me whenever you want you can come over mm. whenever you want so um, all of them dealt with it in a very different way um, but they'd always come over and say hi and hang out. But Chester was the sweetest yeah. because as a five-year-old little boy, he didn't really understand. He just thought she looked a bit funny. Um, but he'd come in and go, can I have a Lego man? <laughs> because she had a stash of, like, little Lego men oh. in her drawer in the kitchen. And um, it was like a sweetie jar, but it was full of little Lego men. Yeah. And she'd go, yes. And I'd go, say that. Oh, give her a hug. Like, you know, and he'd be going, thanks, Caroline, bye. And I'd get off, he'd go, and I'd think, God bless the Lego men. Like, you know, yeah. thank God they were there. And actually, them knowing that it was OK for them to come and go in what was a very difficult time for them as well and trying to understand it and come to terms with it. But after she'd gone, they were so grateful for that. Exactly. And those little last moments that they had with her mm. and that they were never blocked out, they were never not um, included in diagnoses or when it got mm. worse, they knew everything. And actually, I was grateful that I did that. It might not be right for everybody, but mm -hmm. everybody might not yeah. be like that, but it definitely worked yeah. for our family. And afterwards, they dealt with it quite well because yeah. they'd been part of the whole thing. He was mm. amazing at the funeral. I don't know if yours... Yeah. Chester was like, is she going in the fire now? Yeah. <laughs> is, is this the fire? Like, we, I mean, it kind of made us all laugh a bit because yeah. I just thought, well, this is, you know, yeah. this is yeah. through the eyes of a five-year-old. Yeah. yeah, she's going into the fire, darling. If you've enjoyed that, then why not click here for more? And don't forget to subscribe by clicking here so that you never miss out on the best Loose Women moments.